All right, thank you, Ms. Sweda. Um, my name is Kyle Otte. Uh, my name is Gaur Patel, and we're doing the planet sunscreen. And basically, we're going to be talking more about the magnetic field. So, imagine a day you wake up, and first thing you do is you go to turn off the lights. Now, the lights don't turn off. A little strange. Then you go use the bathroom, and after you've done your business, you realize you can't flush the toilet. All right, another problem. Then you go downstairs, and you see your parents, and they're going a little crazy right now. They're screaming, and they don't know what's happening. And they should have been at work about an hour ago, but they're still at home. Now, imagine this happened to all families in a large area. This is what happened in Quebec on March 10, 1989. Basically, there was a very large solar flare. And this came into contact with Earth's magnetic field. Now, when this happens, um, there could have been a lot of effects. And one mainly being uh, affecting the electrical grid. And what happened in Quebec was it pretty much shut down the electrical grid for 12 hours. And basically, this completely stopped everyone's daily life for 12 hours. It just stopped. And people could not be able to get to work. There were often like food sort of shortages in many areas. And basically, this could also affect the economy. And so there's nothing fun that comes out of this. And this was all due to our magnetic field, which during this time wasn't as strong as it should have been to be able to protect, the sol uh, protect our Earth from the solar flare. And if you look at our Earth, it is just a giant rock, right? And this makes it very unpredictable. And often we don't, can't really predict what would happen in the future, especially when considering something that's not in our hands, like the magnetic field. So in any case where our magnetic field were to stop protecting us, there would be many effects such as, like we saw with Quebec, fried electrical grids, changes in everyday life, and even damage to spacecraft and damage to astronauts. And this would pretty much um, make us lose a lot of money as we would need a lot of it to repair all the damages that this would cause. And we would probably be picking up the pieces still today. So this is a very large issue that may look like in our eyes something that we cannot control. But I feel like if we take the right steps and small steps, we'd be able to solve anything, even this one. And now to understand sort of the problems that are weakening the magnetic field, could bring we want to kind of understand what the magnetic field is first. Um, so uh, the magnetic field of the Earth, it starts uh, in the core of the Earth, uh, the inner core, uh, and the outer core. Um, one thing to note is that the magnetic field is not studied too extensively. We've only been kind of looking at it for about 200 years, so there's not much that we do know about it. Uh, but what we do know is that it all starts with electrical currents inside the planet, inside the core. Uh, and when charged particles move around, they kind of make their own magnetic fields. And when they all start, kind of start doing this together, uh, they make bigger magnets. So the molten, the molten iron in the outer core here, um, it's so hot in the, in the Earth that it becomes ionized, meaning that the electrons from metals are kind of ripped apart uh, from metals. So the positive metals are kind of swishing around and the electrons are going all crazy. They don't really know what to do. Um, and this, this uh, molten iron is moving around inside the Earth uh, due to convection currents. So it's kind of like the same thing, just like how hot air rises. Um, this hot iron uh, is rising towards the crust and going back down to the cool. It's kind of creating these spirals inside the Earth. And what really makes this magnetic field work is uh, something known as the Coriolis effect, which you might have heard of before. Um, so kind of as the, the molten iron is spinning around in the Earth, the Earth is also spinning on its axis, and this is what's kind of making these spirals inside the Earth that run north to south. So this creates a system known as a geodynamo, and this uh, just kind of create, uh, keeps the magnetic field alive, running it, it kind of just keeps it running by itself. And this is the main system that protects us from solar radiation, and it's also the system that causes uh, the northern lights to appear. Uh, and you can kind of see from this diagram what happens real quick with the northern lights? Uh, the radiation comes from the sun and it kind of gets funneled into the weaker spots uh, towards the pole of the magnetic field, uh, which is why you can see these lights in the north and south poles mainly. Um, another thing 
that the magnetic field helps us with is the atmosphere, because if we did not have a magnetic field, the atmosphere would just be gone. We would all we would all die. It's basically like a shield around the Earth, um, so that all the gases essential for life, uh, especially oxygen, they would just be released into space. We wouldn't have those, and we'd be gone. Um, but remember, this has only been studied for around 200 years. Um, so if it is weakening, there could be more problems. Um, and one of these, uh, one way it could be weakening, actually, um, is something known as a magnetic pole reversal. Uh, so this is caused by different temperatures inside the Earth, which encounters the poles to switch. And the Earth is actually long overdue for a pole reversal. It happens about every once, uh, once every 200,000 years. It's actually been about 700,000 years since the last one. So we should be kind of expecting one soon. Uh, also important to note for this, uh, the Earth actually has two poles. Um, there's the geographic North Pole that's kind of, it's more of a location that doesn't change. That's where the Earth spins. Um, but we also have this magnetic North Pole. Um, this is the pole that actually moves around. It, it doesn't stay in one space. Uh, that's because um, it's part of the magnetic field and uh, everything in the on Earth is, is always moving. It's kind of unpredictable, so this can kind of move around. As it goes. They usually stay close to each other, um, but that does move. So when these poles switch, uh, the magnetic field could actually be weakened about one tenth of its strength, which could be devastating to us. So you can see kind of uh, here, kind of this is what would happen um, during the pole reversal. It does take a while. We wouldn't be alive for the whole thing. Um, but right here, the orange is the north magnetic pole, the blue is the south, and this is kind of when they're uh, starting to switch. You can see. The north is kind of going off to the left, and the south is kind of all over the place. They don't really know what to do. It's kind of all jumbled up. It's confusing. And this is why the magnetic field, when it's switching, um, doesn't offer as, as much protection when it's like this. And then this is kind of the end result of the south pole now on top and the north on the bottom. And then this is just basically uh, a diagram of what the Earth, Earth's magnetic field kind of looks like. We have the geographic north pole where the Earth spins, and then we also have the magnetic North Pole, um, where the magnetic field is kind of uh, oriented on. And the, these rings are kind of uh, how the magnetic field extends into space. Now, when we look at what would happen if the magnetic field weren't able to protect us, we've seen many events in the past where um, such instances showed how powerful um, the sun especially could be. If we didn't have a magnetic field, uh, the one I discussed earlier, the one in Quebec, uh, that one was one of the stronger ones that happened in the past. And another one similar to this was in July 2012. It was called a coronal mass ejection. And basically, if you look at this picture, this is when there's large bursts of energy from the sun and plasma and other material. It comes hurling towards Earth. Now, if you look at Earth in the bottom left, this is what it would look like compared to the sun. And if you look at the flares and, uh, I guess, the materials coming out of the sun, it's much larger than Earth. So you could imagine the problems that would cause. Now, it tore through Earth's orbit in uh, 2012, and it just barely missed. So we were very fortunate that, th that this didn't happen. And the UV radiation and X-rays that could have hit the planet would have been twice as damaging as the one in Quebec. Now, usually, um, because this would have been much worse than Quebec, the more damage that these uh, solar flares could cause, the time it takes to repair can increase exponentially. And we would probably still be picking up the pieces today in 2021, even if this happened in 2012. And another place where um, the magnetic field is extremely weak is in the South Atlantic anomaly. So if you look at the diagram here, the area that's blue and black, this is the area that's known as the South Atlantic Anomaly. And this is pretty much where um, the magnetic field is much weaker compared to the area around it. Where if you look um, at the area around it, it's uh, yellow and orange. This is where the magnetic field is stronger. So this also causes a lot of problems, for, especially for spacecrafts and um, astronauts, as low orbiting satellites um, could be hit with higher amounts of radiation here. And this could short circuit and get damaged. And astronauts here that are, uh, could be hovering over this area are particularly prone to more, um, I guess, skin damage from the sun and radiation exposure. 
And space agencies often um, shut down non-essential functions when things pass over this area just to make sure that nothing, that no problems occur. And power boards on the International Space Station are also reset once a month because of this. And um, this is also something that still needs to be researched more as we don't uh, know why this actually happens. So there's still a lot more research we need to do to figure this out and, and possibly solve this. So there are many effects that a weakening magnetic field can bring to us. Um, it's important to note that the solar radiation from the sun, it would damage things around us before it physically hurt us, but eventually it could hurt us. Um, so the UV radiation could cause sunburns, uh, eye problems such as cataracts, sunburn eyes, uh, eye cancers. It could also weaken our immune systems and even cause skin cancer. Um, and these would obviously become more common if the field were to weaken because there would be more areas around the world where people are getting hit with higher amounts of radiation, uh, especially over time. And even with this, some, uh, some places could become inhabitable. And with all these health situations, uh, healthcare systems would eventually be overloaded, just making things a lot, more harder, a lot harder to deal with and a lot more complicated. Uh, and as we've seen, big events uh, like the one in Quebec have already been bad enough. So if the magnetic field weakens, um, solar flares, flares are obviously going to be much more dangerous for us in the future. Uh, and for example, like New York City, uh, if they happen to uh, shut down their power grid for just one day, it would cost $1 billion. Um, so when the power grids are shut down, um, it makes life much harder. Less work gets done, people starve over time as fridges and freezers um, start to lose power. Um, less there are less transportation services over time. And it could also get worse for spacecraft. Um, and taking this into consideration um, with the spacecraft and kind of no, no electricity around, uh, global communication systems, especially over time, uh, will start to be damaged because the satellites we know and rely on will be much harder. Um, they'll, they'll be damaged over time and they'll be a lot harder to use. Uh, many of the systems will probably shut down. Um, and like, for example, uh, in 2016, there was a satellite launched by Japan named uh, Hitomi. And right after it passed over the SAA, the South Atlantic Anomaly, uh, it broke into about five pieces. And scientists uh, theorized that it had technical issues uh, because of the high radiation amounts that it was exposed to as it flew over the SAA, which is why it was destroyed. And this cost Japan $270 million. Um, also, spacewalks, those could be a lot harder to conduct, um, especially over the SAA already, they're harder to conduct. Um, and spacecraft would also need more shielding, and that would uh, cost us a lot more money. Uh, especially, we'd want to protect the satellites, which we rely on, like GPS, um, and also like the, our television systems, our radios, all that we'd want to protect. Now, when we try to think of solutions for this, this is where things can get a little complicated. In our eyes, when we look at the magnetic field, it seems as this is something that's not under our control, and it's not. So there's nothing directly we can do to fix the magnetic field or its weakening, but that doesn't mean we should lose hope, as we can't just let our faith rest on a timer and basically let that decide when we go extinct. So, we decided that it would be best to take proactive measures to deal with this, and this would mean we would have to consider factors of protecting electrical grids um, and like dealing with healthcare issues, as well as satellites and other space equipment. So um, health issues uh, should be probably our first concern, and then we want to protect all the humans that live on this earth. And, um, Rays are already pretty harmful to, and damaging, especially to our skin and our bodies. So this should obviously be our first concern. And what we would say is funding in the medical field would most likely be our best bet in this case in order to deal with these sort of health issues that would arise if the sun's uh, rays were able to hit us. And cancer already is a pretty um, hard issue to deal with. So an exposure to the sun would probably lead an increase to the rise of cancer. So more funding could help us find better measures to avoid such illnesses. And radiation exposure would also be common 
in a, in a situation where the sun's rays would be hitting us. And if we look at Chernobyl, um, this was one of the events that happened that showed us really what radiation could do to us. And uh, there were 27 firefighters that came in to um, rescue the people that in the area that there was a radiation spill, and they all died within three months. So this really isn't no joke, and we should be really considering more research and funding into the medical field, uh, especially for radiation-based illnesses, radiation-based illnesses, in order to, uh, to prevent any um, future human deaths because of that. And the second factor, uh, factor to consider would also be the electrical grid because, of course, especially over time, um, without electricity, um, the medicine that we use to maybe treat these illnesses um, from radiation, they'd be harder to progress. And they'd be more difficult uh, to kind of uh, create these medicines and like kind of transport them all over the world. Uh, so we'd want to we'd want to protect our electrical grids, um, fund as much as we can into them because they affect our our. Uh, our daily lives as well as the economy. Um, we'd also want to protect spacecraft more because we want to continue sending people into Earth, uh, especially missions that will happen close to Earth. We want to make sure the astronauts are always protected. Um, so with all this, we, we can't control, like we said, what the planet does, but we can control how we act. These proactive measures would help humanity no matter what. It's basically just money that we would need for this, but we should always choose money over life. And it's, it's just not worth risking our lives because we don't feel like acting. Um, so this will be a team effort, but steps should be taken sooner or later before things can get much worse. Thank you.